Global Dynasty, they had their best stage ever. They made their first playoffs and they were able to beat New York, the team that everyone was saying was gonna take the whole thing on their way there. And it's tough to top that, you know? How do you keep your emotions in check? How do you keep the momentum going after having your best performance ever heading into stage two against a top opponent in the Gladiators where everyone's saying this team was the best team that didn't make playoffs? It's tough, you know? This is gonna be a tough matchup for Seoul, even though they had such an incredible playoffs. You know, a lot of people are predicting Gladiators to take this. Yeah, I mean, Gladiators did have a, a couple of rough moments in that series just the other day, just yesterday. So we'll see how they bounce back, whether or not they can clean things up a bit. I think they might need to do it. But the question is, what roster are they going to be going up against at the beginning here from the Dime Seat? Because they've already shown that both their A and the B squad, as we have been saying, and are both pretty top tier for them. Yeah, definitely the case, you know, for the Gladiators in their match against Shanghai. There were some ups, there were some downs. Shanghai definitely throwing some curveballs in that series. We got to see Decay <laughs> for the second time on Genji here on Temple of Anubis. And there were certainly some incredible moments for him on that hero. For the Shanghai Dragons, it was Junkrat all the time. I think the big standout for the Gladiators in this series as well, even though it wasn't a perfect series for them by any means, they certainly have... Uh, you know, shown the proclivity to be able to shut down different types of compositions. They dealt with so many shenanigans on the side of the Shanghai Dragons, yeah. and still came out looking pretty good. Junk rats, some excited Doom Fist play. There's a lot Soldier of oddities. Sticks. Yeah, so there's a lot of oddities that we saw from the side of the Shanghai Dragons, but they were able to stabilize. It's one of those series for the Gladiators where it's really hard to decide who the player of the match is. They came able to take it in the end, but there was many, many candidates uh, that could have won that. We'll see. If the Gladiator is going to be taking away the player of the match here at the end of the series, if they can pick up that victory. So let's go ahead and bring them out. With, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hometown squad, the Los Angeles Gladiators. Gladiator. Gladiator. Gladiator still trending upwards right now after a rocky start in stage one, taking the win just yesterday. To talk about, you know, how they've been improving, how much they some great moments against Shanghai yesterday. But this is also a tough opponent to face after back-to-back -back matches, right? That's an incredibly tough schedule to face Shanghai, you know, when they're throwing you curveballs, then to head into Seoul, a team that defeated New York in playoffs. Our starting six will be missing sure, sure for today, though we'll just be starting Void instead. Yeah, so we'll just be seeing Hydration and Decay. Void coming back in. See if this is the squad that can get the job done. Their opponents, they're on a tear right now. Their first playoff performance taking down NYXL. Let's see if they can take down the Gladiators. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Soul Dynasty. Soul Dynasty, absolutely having their best stage, you know, but the question always remains, can they repeat that performance? Can they keep the ball rolling, keep the momentum rolling here? This is the first step as we head into this. Fisher will face off against his old team as well. We call him the Revenant because he's defeated so many of his former teams. He's got a fantastic record against them as well. Always out for revenge, it seems. And now he faces the Gladiators here. We will see him on the starting roster. It's not going to be what Seoul calls their control roster here to start this series off. Fisher is coming out of the gates right from the start. Yeah, might have to re-engineer the roster led by Marvel now that we have the slight shift in the meta here. Things are changing up, getting shaken up quite a bit. We'll see how things are going to unfold though. With Fisher starting things off, looking for another victory. This guy, I mean, just utter dominance versus his former teams. Undefeated yep. versus former teams as well in five different series. London four times, then the Gladiators there as well in stage one. So. Second time against the Gladiators now this season and looking to repeat that performance, perhaps even look for the 4-0 this time. And it was week one, so it's not the Gladiators roster that now has decay, but even still, uh, Fisher has this incredible record. I mean, the name rep that he's earned uh, is, it's just crazy to think that it, it's almost like a myth. You, it couldn't be true, but it is. Well, it should be harder than ever to try to take down his former squad new addition but we'll go ahead and take a look at the map set presented by toyota oasis again to start us off then we're going back to paris which you and i saw yesterday and king's row and gibraltar again to close things out on escort and less
second kit to a fifth and final map to decide it all. Both these squads certainly could go the distance. They want to walk away with a clean victory, though. We'll see if either is going to be able to do so as we kick things off on University. University, a map that saw a lot of McCree play back in the very beginning of its release. And we do see Decay highlighting the McCree at the moment. There's a lot of different ways to utilize McCree on University. If you can get that line of sight, if you can control the high ground to the side, that's going to be your best bet. And he will continue to use this. Meanwhile, Dynasty is using Fitz on Sombra with the Moira variation here. We'll run over to the Zarya now. And now if Decay can control that high ground during this hero swap, this is massive. A really aggressive forward push here from the Gladiators. Unable to get into range, though, to pick off anybody from the side of the Dynasty. Point getting ready to unlock in five seconds. Dynasty regrouped, pushing up the side as well. We'll see some swaps coming through. Shaking things up, Big Goose is there to taxi Decay back over to the point. So the initial cap going to be given to the Dynasty. They want to match the Zarya here. It's going to cost them the point. It's going to cost them a lot of ult charge. And just going to be zapping out for now, Decay. Pushing his way forward, lobbing in those right clicks, trying to get some damage in. Fitz nearly going down, trying to stay alive. But Fitz are going to get stunned up and he'll get taken out. Decay managing to find the kill. Void, however, going to be popped out of the mech at the same time. So a bit of an exchange on the tank lab, but now Roar as well. Going to be eliminated. Boy manages to pistol his way back into the mech. Nearly getting the flip here are the Gladiators, but unable to do it. Soul Dynasty is still going to be taking up now, exceeding 30%. Shaz has that transcendence online, instantly going to be popping that one. Jay Hong waiting patiently, spamming away with the left clicks, trying Fitz to find has a the pick grab. before he has to use it. The grab's going to be coming through. Doesn't have to use it yet. And the kills are going to be coming in, and Fisher gets that two for one special on the melee hit. Big Goose and K both going to be taken down. Munchkin, the only one. The gladiators are able to trade back, so the dynasty maintain control. I think when you take the gamble of running the McCree and you swap it late like this, you're always going to run the risk of losing control of the point, losing that first Graviton surge. Transcendence was forced early in the fight, so Fitz knew that his Graviton was going to be massive because there was no mitigating healing. And now Soul Dynasty still has even ultimates, in fact, a slight lead in ultimates with both support ults here. So flipping this point with the Graviton for Decay like they want to is not going to be easy. Drops back down, goes in straight on to Shaz. Now the Primal Rage going to be coming through. Sound barriers out from the Gladiators as they try to sustain through this and try to get that flip coming back in. But Jex has got the Sound Barrier himself to go ahead and match. Grab's going to be coming in. Decay locking him up, looking for the kill. Transcendence is out from Jay Hong and Michelle's got the bomb. Decay and Big Goose both get taken out. And Soul Dynasty will maintain control. They might just take this 100 to 0. With the transcends coming out from Jae Hong, all that damage is blocked. You've got the self-destruct there for good measure, for safety amongst the collapsing heroes of the gliders. Void's gonna try to tag the point. He has the remech, but there's just no one else really to come in and follow up. Bomb gonna be used. He'll get back into the mech here on a high ground. Grab locking him off the point. Void now gonna be jumping down. Transcendence does come through from Shaz to try to keep him topped up, but the focus fire from the Dynasty is just too damn good. That's gonna be the K going down now. Shaz joining him as the OT starts ticking away faster and faster. They get the pop up out again, and it's gonna be 100 to zero start on University as Dynasty take the first round. Decay wants to match the Zarya because the, uh, you know, if you go for McCree and you fail in that regard and your opponent gets a grab first, you lose the first point, you're so behind, you've practically given the map away in this meta. So as soon as he sees the enemy Zarya and he sees that it's not gonna be a Reinhardt cop, uh, or excuse me, you know, he sees that it's not gonna be a Reinhardt cop, yeah, that, um, he decides to swap back, but that gives Soul the first point, and they have Defender's Advantage, and Fitz utilizes that to get the better exchange in terms of Zarya ults. But it's just all downhill from there. It's tough, you know, to make a call like the Gladiators did to go back and swap. But there are consequences when you lock in the McCree first against the Zarya composition. Well, here we go, city center. Could decide it all, unless the Gladiators can tie things up. Fitz is gonna be over onto that Sombra. Swapping for now, just yeah, scouting. scouting out. Jaehyung will do the same. Back to the Zarya. So will the Gladiators get control of the point first this time? That is the question as it unlocks in seven seconds here. They're on it. And now Seoul has to approach to use their cooldowns to touch. Decay up here onto the high ground. Not going to be having any energy yet. Taking a beating though. They'll get pushed up. Oh, instantly surging up to 70, but still 95 HP. Has uh, to so work his way back around the corner to keep himself safe. 
Honestly, fully entrenched at this point. Both squads, all members in onto the point as they look for the first cap. Fisher gonna be jumping in deep, get stunned up, but this time not gonna get picked off. Doesn't manage to stay alive. Jexay is just surging forward as far as the charge. Big Goose matching him. Sound barrier is online for both sides. Sound barrier, triggers pulled first by Big Goose. Now Jexay matches. Jay Hong and Shaz both with, with the transcendences, so maybe the next support ults get ready to roll through. Gladiators nearly have the cap. It's, it's gonna be rallies up from both sides. Ward pop in the primal range. Goes up into the air, drops back down. Now Fisher gonna be matching with one of his own. Jexay, however, finds the first kill. Shaz will be massive. eliminated. Grab's gonna be online on both sides. Neither invested yet. Shaz Gladiators is dead. have the point for now, but it's only 10%. It could be a very fast flip for Dynasty as the kills continue to come through. Okay, they don't use the grab either. Fitz can hold on to this. This is massive. There were opportunities for him to use it. When Shaz was dead there, there was no transcendence, but they knew it was a one fight, and he gets to hold it now for the approach. Now, a lot of teams are trying to use this grab outside of the point in situations like this where the attacking team is coming in with the transcendence to defend. It doesn't look like that's Soul Dynasty's plan, at least not directly. Fitz rather wants to utilize the high ground for damage, try to force the transcendence to come out early. You can see he's targeting Shaz. He's getting poked down here, but it's not enough damage to force the trance. I mean, Decay as well, just trying to really work this guy as much as they possibly can. Grab's gonna be coming down straight here to the center, just off the side. Jay Hope nearly getting punched. Perfect just get that transcendence off. The bomb from Michelle not gonna be able to find any kills, but Void will be able to punish the baby Diva. So gonna be without one of the tanks here is the Soul Dynasty, but Fisher is getting closer and closer to that next Primal Rage. Roar taking a beating, nearly eliminated, but Primal's coming up for him as well. Chance gets stunned, but not gonna be able to find a kill yet. Fisher pushes forward, managed to find hydration. Now it's gonna be the Primal coming through. Shaz getting completely disconnected from the rest of his squad, and Fisher just stomps on him. Yeah, you know, Roar's the new main tank of the Gladiators since Fisher's left. And it's crazy, you know, when you think about the history of these two players in Korea, Fisher is the you know, older brother, uh, so to speak, and he is winning this matchup right now. Roar's gonna swap over to Ryan because he's hoping that they can hope to, to get a single kill, perhaps a charge kill, win the fight through that damage, that Reinhardt hammer damage, because they don't really have any other tools here, and they have no time left. 30 seconds, basically, 30% is all it's gonna take. Yeah. Here on the low ground, all that verticality essentially gone. It's gonna have to be Void to try to displace the members of Dynasty, but if he pushes up, Fitz is low enough energy that he's not going to melt him out of that mech, but still could do some serious damage. The energy building up, the grab goes ahead, locks him into the wall, sound barrier is going to be coming in from Big Goose, but Shaz picked off before he can get the transcendence online, 8% away, all the shielding going to be gone. Trying to get that pin, unable to find it. Jexay gets stunned up for the moment, the transcendence comes in from Jay Hong to keep him topped up. Jump into the back from Fisher with the primal race, just knocking him around, left and right, hydration going to be taken out. And Fisher is just causing Decay. so much chaos for the Gladiators right now. Grab goes off at least, but he's down and there's just no way. They do find it. A couple members over onto the point, desperately trying to keep things elongated. For the rest of the squad to rejoin, Shaz finally coming back in. He's trying to keep Void in that mech. Squad Orb really helps shred through that. We'll lose it in the end. Bomb coming down from Michelle, just to zone him out. The OT will plummet, and Soul Dynasty will kick things off with a 2-0 on Oasis. Very, Very impressive stuff here from the Dynasty. It really starts to feel like this squad has found their footing, and they look consistent, they look clean. Ever since the playoffs, you know, no one's wondering, is Soul Dynasty a strong team anymore? Yeah, they're looking pretty darn good. Let's see if the Gladiators can bounce back when we come back for map two. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Not nearly as close of a showing as we might have expected there from the Gladiators at the start on Oasis. Soul Dynasty able to take it 2-0 in the end. One of the rounds, 100 to 0. So very convincing start to this series for them. I've always been impressed with, in this meta, how well Jay Hong has been able to time his transcends. That one was razor thin. Yeah. I mean, he was definitely down to 20 or less HP when he was able to hit it. He's successful in staying alive. We're seeing so much coordination out of this team that's seen changes. You know, we talk about the original Lunatic High roster that was brought over as the original Soul Dynasty. It's, we, it's This is not even close to that same roster, right? And so many new players this season as well coming through. They've added even two new players we haven't seen yet. And Dynasty just seems to be gelling with all of it right now. It took some time to really find their footing, but we're seeing it now. Uh, and Fisher is coming in as a great new leader to the team alongside Jae Hong, the captain, you know, and one of the original founding members of Lunatic High came over here as the original captain of the Soul Dynasty. It's crazy to see, um, you know, just how dominant they can look yeah. in a series like this against a top opponent in the Gladiators. No one really expected them to come out and look this uh, dominant and win these maps this one-sided. Things could change up a little bit. This was primarily 3-3, so something that the Dynasty is very used to playing. If things change up for the future maps, maybe they will struggle, but speaking of changing things up, we've got Shurkor coming in. After the loss there, Void gonna be stepping away. And this was, uh, you know, this substitution we saw primarily yesterday versus the Dragons, uh, you know, in terms of hit scan play, right? Shurkor was on the Widow, yeah. and we saw that on Control. Now we're seeing it heading into Assault, our second map of this series for Shurkor to come in on. So how they utilize him here is yet to be seen, but that's the kind of expectations we have is will we see more Widow from this guy as we head into Assault? Yeah, so Para is going to be coming up for our second map. We'll see uh, if he is going to be running that. You know, it's been a, we got, we've seen a couple different things. Soldier 76 especially uh, has been looking pretty popular on Paris so far. Yeah. We're still developing this map. Obviously, it's the debut here at Stage 2. Yesterday was the start, so there's a lot more evolution, I think, that's going to be coming in from compositions on that map as people really start getting used to it on this Yeah, and one of the things that we could also expect to see from Sure4 if the Gladiators plan to run it is Bastion. You know, he may be coming yeah. in to play Bastion here. Um, and, you know, Bastion's a hero that works really well until it doesn't, and you have to have a lot of flexibility, right, when you're subbing away from the Bastion. So a player like Sure4 is going to fit into that role quite nicely. Paris. Very unique map right now in this uh, stage, I and mean, we've only had two days of it, but we've seen a lot of different types of strategies. We've seen a lot of Bastion play, but defending B is very difficult. And, you know, once the first cap comes through, the snowball into the second point is is tough to prevent. And it will be sure for on the Bastion. Yep, as no you shocker. mentioned. So, not too surprising. Though, the tank line up here Roar on the Winston, and Hydration on the Orisa. That's right. So changing things up a bit, and also not seeing a Mercy. So the lack of a Mercy here is gonna give you two, there's two weaknesses or two, you know, trade-offs to that. One is you're not gonna have the extra damage boosting, and you're also not gonna have the Resurrect factor. But what the Winston gives you here with, uh, coupled with the Orisa is the ability to dive the backline. If Soul is aggressive, you can punish that when the supports are left behind, you can also, you know, have a second barrier with the bubble. So Sol is going to kind of identify with Michelle here what's going on and decide what sort of composition they would like to attack with. Oh, or just checking for him. Well, Jay Hong going to be showing us the Batista and Fitz moving over to the Genji, at least for now. Still finalizing a couple details, it seems. Yeah, looks like our traditional dive here. Fitz very known for dive play, especially his Doomfist in the past, so let's see if he can make this Genji work. Remember, this is all about getting those dash resets more than the Dragon Blade to take a point like this. They saw Roar around the side, unable to punish him. Poke their heads out, start taking some shots from Sure4 as he tries to build up for that configuration tank. It's gonna be jumping forward, has the deflection ready to go. They pile in on top of the Bastion, unable to find the kills so far. Both of those immortality fields gonna be taken down, but now Fisher and Jay Hong both going to be eliminated, and it looks like a very solid start on the defense for the Gladiators. So let's explain really briefly what they tried to do there. 
You could see that Jaehong was able to, at range, place the Immortality Field on top of the entry point, so Fitz was actually unable to die there. Did a massive amount of damage. They were hoping to, throughout that Immortality Field, kill Sure4 and give a, you know, a dash reset to Fitz. Instead of doing that, you know, he fails, but he still builds on one push 65% of a Dragon Blade. Let's see if this second one is going to give him that opportunity to pull the blade. Well, Jaehong maybe, will have another Immortality Field. Yeah, maybe be able to pull the blade, but sure for will be able to transform into a tank. As that one online, and it's also going to be the Amp Matrix ready. Munchkin at the moment, looking for a bit of a back cap. Hear that sound. Ready to go, just taking some pot shots in. But unable to find any real connections here. That's all right. And now with the Dynasty, though, it's going to threaten the point more directly. May force first force sure for to reposition as Fitz is about to have the Dragon Blade. Pushing forward, Nana Boo's going to be Here coming down. Now the Dragon Blade will be drawn out. Fitz manages to find sure for. Fisher gets two. Slashed it away, will be able to finish off that Orisa, and just like that, point A has been broken through. Soul Dynasty gonna be getting the cap. This is a very clearly practiced strategy for the Dynasty with the Immortality Field to give Fitz that charge, then to come in for the second push, threaten the Gladiators to be split up by touching the point with Munchkin on the Sombra, then coming back in with the uh, extremely potent Dragon Blade, and for the Gladiators now, it's time to switch up composition. This is why I was talking about Surefor is the guy you want to have on the Bastion because he's going to be great at the Soldier 76, he's great at Widow, whatever you need this to be, you can swap. As I say it, he will swap once more back to the Bastion as they're trying to decide the best way to hold this and prevent the Snowball. It's not going to be possible to Snowball because Dynasty is not going to continue this composition. In fact, not even going to continue to run the Sombra, so they've got plenty of time. EMP could catch everybody here. Big bio grenade. Have to be very careful. Jaehong going lower. Manages to get that armor pack at the last second. The K going to be translocating. Doesn't use the ult yet. Or in the meantime, has popped that primal range with the help of Sure 4. They will take Fisher down. So Dynasty going to be held at bay for now. So for this next push for the Soul Dynasty, they have to decide how they want to get Fitz the ult charge because he's getting burned down early, having to back off. And they also have to worry about this EMP. If the EMP gets used here, I'm going to feel pretty decent about it because this isn't the push to grab B. This is a push to try to get that ult charge for Fitz. We may even see in a longer fight the nano boost onto Fitz just to build ult charge. Here's Fisher. Fisher yeah, jumping in from the side. Bomb into the back to really displace him. Immortality Field does come down. Sure, four. It's going to be melted away. Comes up with a double kill. Doesn't even need that amp matrix. Let's just go ahead and sack them on top of each other. Four kills to the Bastion. Another tank configuration nearly ready to go. Great EMP from Decay. Soul Dynasty do not have, you know, they did not have the nano boost for that last push. So Fitz is only able to build a little bit more ult charge. He's at 62. And that's really what you need because the Graviton is how you're going to break this point with a comp that Soul Dynasty is running. That and a good bio grenade on top of it from Jaehong because there's no transcendence. All they're gonna have is the immortality field, and that's not gonna last long during a Graviton Surge. So this is another one of those pushes where Soul is gonna try to get a single pick while also therefore then, if it fails, getting fits that Graviton. They can use the Nano to make that happen. A couple members looking like they wanna wrap around the back, not gonna there happen it yet. They jump their way through. Big Goose gonna be taken down by Fisher. Shafort able to melt Michelle out of that mech. Fisher will be able to stop the Bastion out of existence. Configuration tank still going to be held, but Fisher lands on a trap. The bubble comes in too late to save him. Soul Dynasty, can they do anything here? Jay Hong now dropping down, trying to keep his teammates alive, but Munchkin will be eliminated, and Hydration just pumping out damage with this Junkrat. It may be time to take a look at what Dynasty is doing in a different way, because, you know, on one way, you could look at it saying they were going to nano fit so he could get the last part of the Graviton, maybe burn down in with all the extra damage there the Bastion, but they committed it onto Fisher instead. He's now going to swap over to the Reinhardt, so that was perhaps always part of the plan, is if this doesn't work, I'm going to swap anyways. But they didn't build a grab, they didn't succeed with this push, they didn't get a single tick, and now they're missing the Nano, and time is running out. Jaehong is going to build it very quickly, but these things like the Reinhardt swap are really going to cost you. Decay, pushing in from the side. Everybody going to be grouped up, has that EMP. He's waiting for his moment. They do manage to scout him out. So goes ahead and peels back. Graviton Surge going to be coming through. 
It's gonna be the rip tire, rolls its way in. And Jae Hong gets pop short for it. will be traded out though. But with two members down, faster, close to respawn for sure for Dynasty. I don't think this is gonna be it. No, this isn't gonna be it. And there's an EMP ready. There's configuration tank ready. And not even one third of the point has been taken. Souls lost their Graviton. They have very few tools to make this work. Fisher's going to have to carry this, I think, with a nano boost on his back, maybe an immortality field. But the problem is he just doesn't have the ability to get on top of the Bastion, right? Because he doesn't have that verticality. He doesn't have that movement that the Winston does. And, you know, meanwhile, EMP could just put a halt to all of this. Yeah, they still just haven't had to use that. They haven't had to use the tank. Dynasty going Super in for another charger. approach. You know, I mean, there's a lot of damage here yeah. for the Gladiators. And five seconds remaining. I mean, Supercharger plus Amp. If he hits like, Jexay, this push is dead in the water. Jex is hiding in the corner. He can see him. Fisher taking a bit of damage here. They haven't been able to scout the K yet. Spamming off to the side now. Really he trying to it. push his way up. Goes ahead. Catches all six. The K will still get popped. But here comes the tank. Jexay gone. Munchkin going to be eliminated as well. Cleanup time coming through. Now it's 40 seconds. Desperate measures for the Dynasty. This is absolutely desperate measures here. You're certainly right about that. Only two ults used. They still have the rip tire. And there's just no way Dynasty, even with the ults they have, these are not the ults they need to break a point. The Immortality Field might be able to shut down the tire, but that's just one part of the defense here. War will be nigh immortal when the Nano Boost comes through. Could just be used on sure for. So Dynasty has to make this work somehow. The support ults could keep Fitz alive to get a Graviton. There are options, but they've got to make a decision fast. The oh, the K gonna be sucked, but he manages to translocate out. They couldn't kill him in time. Now, Rip tires. see Sound Barrier coming in, Michelle. Getting melted down, Fisher gonna get popped. No chance to use that Earth Shatter. Fitz gonna be eliminated. Jay Hulk trades one back, but that's about as good as it's gonna get. Take configuration, ready to go short for trying to stay alive, but doesn't really matter. The team is already dead. He'll celebrate as he transforms into a tank. And they will go ahead and hold the B. All right, Gladiators, fantastic on this Paris defense. Yeah. Soul Dynasty making some interesting decisions in terms of nano boost targets there on the B attack. And it's, you know, a map where holding B, especially in this cop we've seen so many times, is rare to see a complete hold like that. But Soul Dynasty just cannot crack the shield that is the Gladiators. No, they cannot. Well, let's see what the Gladiators can get done on their attack when we come back. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, four here with the Bastion helping to secure that hold on point B of Paris, keeping the hopes alive of tying up this series. All it's going to take is a solid attack, and yep. we've got a tie series on our hands. Sure, four comes through. You know, we talked about the flexibility he has you know, in terms of DPS heroes you might want to run on this map, but he ends up just running the Bastion, and Soul struggles to crack this defense, struggles to find 
an answer. And now on the defense, they'll do something a little bit unusual for this map and run the 3-3, the Winston variation here for Fisher. And the Gladiators will have an opportunity. The attackers have an advantage inherently in this because they can go check. Shrefor can go identify this and then they can come back and alter their composition to exactly what they want. As somebody tells me, hydration on the Fara is absolutely what they're going to be running here. And they have kind of already predicted Dynasty would do this. And we've seen a lot of success out of Far Widow on point A of Paris. Okay, looks looks for that the swap, though. Yeah, not able to find it. Shrefor's already got the translocator ready to go. It's going to be changing it up, seems like. Okay, a little bit of a variation. Shrefor showing us a Reaper. Yep. And this is not, you know, when I saw Hydration go back to the Brigida, I thought, oh, I'm surprised they're going to match this composition, but it's not so. The Brigida can burst heal, sure, for he has lifesteal as well. He can break a tank very quickly. So far, decent protection, though. Not much damage coming through onto Fisher as he played forward. Gets himself half of a primal rage, but Gladiators get themselves an inside track in onto A. Big heal tonight, however, coming through. Big Goose nearly taken down. Spam and coming out from Shaz, though, does keep the Lucio alive. One tick nearly gained for free. Glad to hear so, they have to step off. We all know what Jaehong is capable of on Ana, and he's about to have a nano boost here with Fisher having primal. There's so many ways to delay, and Shurfor just has not done the damage required. He hasn't been able to get into range to do it. Well, this could be primal range playground here for Fisher. Nano. Vitrus trying to knock him off the back of the map, but Decay is going to go ahead, take down both of the supports. Jaehong and Jexay disappearing. But you're not finding an opportunity to use this. Now it's going to be a grab coming in from Fitz, trying to lock him up as much as possible. Sure, four and Hydration both going to be taken down. So despite the healers not being available outside of Munchkin, maybe Dynasty could try to keep this hold going. Shadow's going to hit, though. Fisher Roar melted. Roar's turning this around. And Roar does turn it around, as you say. Sound barrier will be used by Big Goose. They're not on it yet, but it seems like Gladiators will be able to take A now. This is kind of a big individual play from Decay. He's able to identify that Fisher's going in with the Nano Boost, but he's also not able to, in that moment, peel for the support line. So he goes in, high energy, finds Jaehong, finds, uh, you know, I believe it was Jexay who died with him, finds the supports in the back, regardless, yep. and is able to take them out. Then the fight is, in the longer fight, going to go in their favor. Roar comes in with the Shatter, and it all just kind of falls apart. So nice, uh, you know, decision making and identification here of Decay. Like Fisher's going in with this Nano, but he's not popping Primal. He doesn't want to do it. You don't want to stack those ults together. So I have this opportunity. Even as a Zarya, you can kind of flank and find supports and kill them. Well, still no Brigida here for the Dynasty as they try to hold this one off. A single tick is all that the Gladiators need, and they have five minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. Munchkin spamming away because they try to keep Fisher alive. Munchkin getting jumped on from behind, has to use that bio nade just to keep himself in the fight. Roar faking that pin. Fisher gonna be taken down. Shaz gets himself a double kill with the coalescence. Up into the air goes Michelle. But it's a bit too high. Can't contest the point. The Gladiators, they will make this a series. They tie us up one to one. Very impressive stuff here from the Gladiators. Nice individual plays, very one-sided map for them. And momentum has definitely shifted back into their court. That's what we're talking about. Maybe Dynasty's not ready for this hectic style. Tied up. Let's see what happens when he comes back after halftime. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
The man Fisher is still unbeaten against all his former teams, but the LA Gladiators are trying to change that. After losing map one, they clutch it up on map two to tie things up at 1-1 at the half. Welcome back, everybody. Malik here with Zoe and Bryn. Guys, Fisher is looking like he still has that chip on his shoulder from his former teams. Uh, playing very well so far today. What do you guys think? Oh man, he was handling them on that first map. It was all Fisher. He nearly didn't die and he was just stomping all over them. It was actually unreal. It, it was really? unreal. <laughs> I didn't expect it at all to go that way. Fisher versus Roar. Fisher definitely took the better end there. He had the most final blows, a lot of fractional kills from his own team, or I think in the entirety of the match on Oasis. Generally, they just look so well with each other. This Winston 3-3 yeah. uh, is really up in his wheelhouse because you know, we, we did kind of criticize him beforehand on his Reinhardt. He might be a little bit too aggressive. On Winston, he's allowed to do that, and his team actually supports him. And we can see clearly that he is getting the better end of the deal. Something we need to point out here is, of course, that the time plate is a little bit different. We have a bigger sample size from Fisher as he stayed on that Winston a little bit longer. Yeah. However, final blow says it all. And, of course, also the average time to the alt, uh, yeah. like Fisher definitely looked a lot better there his, his primary rage efficiency like the six kills as well like he is a, a master class player to watch when he's ulting on the winston because it's just fantastic to watch it takes so much mechanical skill to be able to just work around that ability you know a lot of people don't right. realize it but it's it's a lot of complex key presses to be able to control winston if, if you want a short hop if you want a long hop whatever it is uh, so it, it takes a lot of game time to really master that so right i love watching good winston players man right. it's so sick to and just game sense in general he always yeah. knows the right thing to do whether it's uh just to space things out just to finish a player off who's low on health yeah, it, whatever used to be, it, be. it used to be a meme like you know no aim no brain winston main but that's <laughs> right. just not true at all <laughs> because true. you need a massive brain to play winston so yeah, yeah. yeah there you Players go like fisher dead that whole term right there all right so let's move on to uh, paris map we saw some of the specialists coming like sure four and big goose really popping off on this map yes we really did paris i think is going to be one of these maps now that, that comes out and it's kind of going to be a little bit like junker town in that some teams can take away results so uh, as you can see from the highlights here I mean, the Gladiators, they had a, sh a clear plan coming into this entire thing. Again, we saw the bunker comp coming out from them. Uh, they were using Baptista's full potential as well. Um, um, immortality field is, in my opinion, uh, like, it's ridiculous, you know, in yeah. terms of uh, uh, the value you can get out of an ability right. that's not even an ultimate. It's kind of crazy. But Soul, we've really got to point out the fact that they were just playing with their brains turned off. Honestly, really because they they kept running triple tank, triple support, goats into this bunker comp. Like, you need to switch off and go onto a damage dealer. Yeah, at, the, at the beginning, I thought they're doing the right thing. I saw them switching onto the Baptiste, but then they also switched off of the Zen. It's like, yeah. okay, so you got a little bit more poke, but you really still don't have a poke comp. So they, they just couldn't break mind. through. And I don't understand why they were so insistent on just not switching off when it's clearly not working. I mean, it's like they're stuck in last stage, where it's like, stay goats, yeah. stay goats, stay goats. Now yeah. it's like, uh, I don't... It's the one time you want to swallow it, you know? <laughs> You want to play some damage to you, set up like a, an attack coming in. And they can't the do bunker. it, so I'm not sure why they didn't just <laughs> yeah. do it. Bizarre, honestly, bizarre. All right, so, so who are you guys giving the edge going into the second half? I mean, I feel like the first half was pretty even. You know, one team dominated the first map, one team dominated the second, but who are you giving the edge going in? I, I feel like moving forward, I'm going to stick with the, the gladiators with my prediction. You better, bro. <laughs> you hear the crowd? You yeah, better. I, I can hear them. I just, I'm trying to get out alive tonight. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to be sticking them. The, the match has been very close between these two teams so yes. far. I think it is closely matched. Fisher is going to dominate on the maps where, you know, you can play the more Winston triple tank, triple support compositions. But moving forward, I mean, gladiators, we know that they've got what it takes. Decay had some incredible moments popping off as well during this series. Yeah. I think... It, Realistically, 50-50 in my mind, but I am going to be sticking with the Gladiators. All right, what about you, sir? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Be I careful. I don't <laughs> want to come out of this arena on scratch. I'm going to stick with my initial prediction, Soul. But it's not a confident vote. It's not a very confident vote. I do think it's going to come back. Uh, hey, hey, don't be mean. Speak your truth, Zoe. <laughs> don't no, apologize. I think Speak it's, your truth. Yeah, no, I think it's going to come down to what maps we're going to be seeing from those two teams and whether or not uh, Soul can actually stick to their guns and play that Winston Goats. So, yeah. We'll see. All right, all right. Well, we got the second half coming up, but that's going to do it for halftime. Now, Brigida was the mainstay in stage one meta, but there's a lot more to her than just holding down left click. We sat down with Hydration from the LA Gladiators to find out how to help shield bash your team to victory at home. This is Game Set, sponsored by Omen by HP. Oh, but Hydration says, no way, man. This point is ours. My name is Jean Pedro Goistelis. I go by Hydration and I play for the LA Gladiators. 
Generally the goal of the Brigida is to help your teammates peel for your back line or help keep your tanks alive. She's a very important character in a defensive playstyle and as well as in an aggressive playstyle. With Brigida, the best way to maximize staying alive and keeping your passive going is playing between your front line and the back line, constantly going back and forth and making sure you get the inspire going and also making sure that you're not out of position where the enemy team can just rush you and eliminate you. When you need to get your inspire going but you're not close enough to the enemy team, a good way is to whip shot the stationary divas that will be usually on like high ground or like taking an off angle. So you will almost always be able to hit them. For my settings, I like to have uh, 240 hertz. You can see everything very clear. I try to have everything off, keep the Rudy's buffering on. I think it helps. I put 300 FPS. It's the highest option. And the more FPS, the better. I like having low graphic settings with 75 render scale, because that helps you achieve the most FPS you can get. For controls, I usually play with seven sensitivity on 800 DPI. But this is my preferred crosshair. It's very simple. Some people don't really enjoy the red color because it's similar to the like enemy outlines, but it works best for me because it's easy to see for me. One thing I like having on is the system clock tells you on the top right what time it is so you don't like lose track of time. One thing you really want to make sure you do with Brig is uh, making sure you get the most out of your swipes. Like right now you see me just hitting one bot at a time. You can hit both of them if you're fast with your swings and you time it perfectly. It's a bit like rhythm and music. In the middle of fights, if people are close to ledges like this bot, one thing you can do is go for a stun and then reposition yourself before he can move and then you can boop them off. Repair sensitivity, if you try to heal one of your teammates and the sensitivity is way too high, you end up healing someone you didn't mean to. This is what it looks like with that 100. There's like a small gap here and you can like swap between. It's uh, very unreliable if like it's in the middle of like a fast fight and you gotta heal them fast. If you have something more precise, a smaller number, which I prefer using 40, it's a lot easier to be more accurate with your heals because the lower sensitivity, the lower of a circle there is around your bots. Prayer sensitivity is a very important thing to really mess around with. Thank you for watching my episode of Game Set. I hope I helped you become a better Brigida player. Hydration will make the difference. Hydration making his presence felt already. Hydration is just having a field day.
Welcome back from the halftime, ladies and gentlemen. We are uh, tied up right now in this series. Gladiators able to take a pretty convincing victory there on Paris. Oasis going the way of the Soul Dynasty, so that brings us to a 1 1 scoreline. One of these teams, though, going to be looking to take the lead as we get ready to move into hybrid for our third map. As was pointed out by the analysts in the halftime show, I do feel like the preparation going into Paris was much better for the Gladiators. They had a clear plan, they had a clear strategy. It felt like Soul was winging it a little bit. That's not obviously what was going on, but their strategy was definitely not optimal for dealing with a bash and the execution missed out there as well. So, you know, in a lot of ways, some people are probably thinking this is going to reset as we head into map three. You know, maybe we'll see more 3-3 three, three out of the soul. Maybe they'll be able to catch back up. But remember, the momentum is definitely in the Gladiator's favor after such a one-sided match. We'll put Void, or rather they'll put, I'm not actually making these decisions. Yeah, actually, Wolf put... is in charge of <laughs> all substitutions. So take it up with him. <laughs> Void coming in for sure. Yes. Four. Uh, so maybe this means that we're going to be leaning away from the the bunker compositions with the Bastion play, uh, since we will be seeing him That's come right. back through. So if this does start going back towards a 3-3 mirror matchup between these teams, maybe that favors Dynasty again, based on what we saw in Oasis. Yeah, and this is King's Row for our hybrid map. So, you know, it's pretty tough to utilize Bastion on this map just because of the architecture of the map itself, especially when you talk about uh, defending, you know, there have been some crazy teams that would run Bastion on attack on the payload, pirate ship style, but for the defense, there's just not a really good way to set up where you're safe, and you can also maximize damage. You're exposed. If you're gonna be able to do the damage, if you're safe, then you can't hit anybody. I'm mean, in the corridor is like, it's just not possible with all the corners. So do expect to see more of the 3-3. Three, three. Sure, we'll defend with the Winston here versus the Reinhardt. And this is no surprise. As the defender, you can do a lot with the Winston and you can strike, cycle between high and low ground, get that extra damage done with your leaps and build a quick primal. Okay, now joining in. I was looking for that initial shot with a Widowmaker, but just going to be swapping back over onto the Zarya. Fisher playing very far forward, gets a ton of charge yep. for that primal range. But Gladiators, they rope their way around through the hotel and now make their way over onto the point where they nearly gra grab this first point. Fisher taking a bit of damage. Look at the sun of him up, and he will go down to K. Scoops up the kill. We're playing up front. Going to be kill as he tries to go in for a pin, though. So now both main tanks going to be eliminated. Gladiators, can they still get this point off the back of that loss? It's all about the Zarya right now. Vitz is getting targeted. That's going to be him going down. Michelle going to be knocked out of the back as well. It seems like Dynasty might just be getting cleaned up as Jexay will die. Jay Hong is plus 40 onto the points. And kill me now, please. Let me just get the reset. Yeah. There's no way Fisher can tag this point, although he was, you know, walking towards it. There's no way he's going to get in there and make any significant impact. So that was a really good realization by the Gladiators that when the tanks were down, that the Zarya matchup was going to determine who was going to take the win on that point fight. And it, it was Big Goose, actually, who had the speed boost coming forward there, and he was able to get the kill on the pit. So everyone was on the same page in terms of focusing bits down. And that's all it takes. We do have a nano boost here for Jay Hong. Going to use it on Fisher. Yeah, toss this one in as the Primal Rage gets ready to come out. As that pops, sun up, but not that much focus fire, so still very healthy on the Winston. And Roar will be taken down to the front lines, unable to build up for that Earth Shadow. Fisher going to be traded back. Void coming up with the kill. Bombs out from Michelle. Will be able to pop Void out of the mech, but he'll go ahead and dump the self destruct and get back in safely. Fisher now seeing his opportunity, will be swapping over onto the Reinhardt to try to match. Will be further behind considerably when it comes down to that ult charge. The problem is the card is still rolling here. You know, these trades are not favorable for the defender when everyone is just continuing to push forward. Yeah, that's going to be the sun coming in. Jexay locked up. Roar in to find that, but hydration on the exchange. Michelle, nice high ground positioning here. Almost takes Roar out. And that shield keeps him alive there. They break the barrier right as he makes it to safety. So now just going to be hugging around the corner, waiting for that to regen. Shatter online for him, Fisher. Third of the way there. For Fisher, he needs to be careful about overextending here. The Big Goose could find him and isolate him from the rest of his squad. But he's looking for the corner hold here against the potential Shatter from Roar. Roar pushing going his in. way up, tries to make his way in behind the shield. Drops the hammer, but the bubble comes through from Vince to keep himself safe. Roar's down to half. Fisher pushing forward with that nano boost. He's feeling saucy, but 
He's not gonna overextend. He shows some restraint, but now the grab coming in long range. Catches the members of Soul Dynasty a bit off guard, but Jexa is there with a the sound barrier. Yeah. Now the grab and response out from Fitz. Transcendence is in from Chess, but the heal that I coming out from Jay Hong helps him pick up three. And finally, this will shift back into the Dynasty's favor here. They finally are able to take the cart control. And Jay Hong is using all of his nano boosts on Fisher, be it the Winston or the Reinhardt, to let him come in and initiate these fights. Block was huge there on the Roar's Shatter attempt. And in terms of damage right now, Fisher is more than doubling his damage on the main tank roll. But when you look at how that last fight went, it was just more patient play from Dynasty going in for the grab that was used second there. And also the heal grenade, uh, you know, the heal deny, the bio grenade from Jaehong was so well placed. Well, Fisher looking to play up around the corner. Turns around, drops the hammer, but the rockets from Void will be able to take him out. Now follow up over on a munchkin. Boy nets himself a double and Jexay under fire. He'll get picked off by Shaz. Cart straight back into rolling. Two and a half minutes remaining as they get ready to move into B and pump up that time that time bank again. Yeah, Fisher being extremely aggressive with how he's rolling forward to hit that potential shatter and exposed himself by turning his back onto Void. So much extra damage to happen in that moment. And Jalen just didn't have any way to save him. The nano boost wasn't ready yet for the burst heal. And now that's just gonna be a beat cap. In around the corner, that's gonna be the grab coming through from Decay, and the kills just spilling forth in favor of the Gladiators. Do lose out on a roar. Seems like it's just a matter of time before they can win out the fight. Sound barrier used as well by Big Goose to seal the deal on this push, but Decay, oh no! Oh, that's uh, less than stellar for him. Michelle, it though, as well, gonna be booped into the pit. Yeah, it won't matter too much in the end of the, at the end of the day, as the cart's still rolling. I'm seeing all these nano boosts on the Fisher, but they're not getting much done. It's the bio grenades that are getting value from Jaehong, but I was gonna say, yeah, it's time to switch over to the Zenyatta, because you need an answer for these decay graviton surges. And I don't know if he's gonna be able to build one in time now. He's already behind in that ult charge. And this is a massive time bank that the gliders have to just grab this final point. Yep, Transcendence ready for Shaz. Jaehong trying to build one up as quickly as he possibly can, 40% at the moment. One thing that they will have is gonna be that sound barrier shortly. Grab's gonna be coming in, Chaz goes forward. Bomb comes in, does clip Big Goose. So they managed to find one plus Void's mech. Gladiator's still playing far forward, but now with the loss of Roar, Hydration's just gonna be jumping off the side. They'll go for a reset. Now, this is, uh, honestly, a life-saving self-destruct for Michelle. Without that, you know, suddenly this fight could look completely different. And in the longer fight, they get the ults that are now shown on screen here, the support ults they need to hold off several more pushes from the LA Gladiators here. If they can make sure these transcendences are used basically only to deny Decay's Graviton Surges, and they already have this, and there is a way where they can hold. Nice play by Michelle to set this all up. You can see Jexay up on high looking for a knockoff. They're gonna Riley's engage. He's gonna be out pushing forward. Fisher looking for another shatter, going dangerously low. Double digits, I tries to drop the hammer, but Shaz cuts him down, taking that one completely away from him. Now things start unraveling again for the Soul Dynasty as the cart continues to advance. Jexay hounded down, taken out by Hydration. The grab has him locked up. It's just gonna be the Diva. It's just Michelle trying to keep the cart contested here at the moment. A couple kills traded back as Shaz does get eliminated before he can get that transcendence online. And Fisher gets a knockoff here onto the K. Is this going start. to be it's enough for them to stabilize? Michelle's going to get popped out. And Gladiators will not adhere. They will not back off. Big Goose has the sound barrier. He's going to slam it down to case, swapping over onto the soldier so he can rejoin in. Big Goose wrapping back around, looking for these right clicks, just trying to dislodge them away from the cart long enough for it to advance. 2.7 meters left to go. Transcendence is out from Shaz. Pile Driver coming in. It's not going to find too much. Michelle going in for another self-destruct. We'll have that one blocked out by Roar. Jexay has to get the heck out of there. He's just too darn low. Fisher pushes back through. Gets the adaptive shield that lasts a little bit longer. Yep. They set him up. Void's going to be able to find the kill. Most bomb going to be coming in, but it's taken away by Void. The D-Matrix perfectly timed by him. Completely denies it away from Munchkin. Very elongated fight. They're draining the clock as much as they possibly can. Void's going to be popping the bomb. Gets a knockout on a Michelle's mech again. Jexay so very low. Just trying to stay in the back and push forward and contest this cart whenever possible. Minefield. Minefield's gonna be dropped in, but Roar's already too far forward. The sound barrier now comes out from Jexay. Another pile driver in. Fisher staying alive, but he falls off the map, but he's got the grapple. He's trying to make his way back in. Michelle, in the meantime, gonna be the one contesting this one. Jexay gets a football on a Roar. Michelle's gonna get popped I out. Can't believe Pack it. Pack Visor's coming out from Decay. He's trying to get it done, 
but the they're blood comes in! Ben shuts this. him down! Hydration manages to find the kills. He swaps over the wrecking ball himself. Gonna be swinging around, but we're gonna be going into overtime. This is an absolutely stunning defense from Seoul right at the finish line, trying to gate them out of this and deny the finish from the Los Angeles Gladiators. Hydration is gonna be going down. They're shutting them out one after the other, and the Seoul Dynasty managed to hold on by a thread. Fisher the Revenant again, the wrecking ball alone. He knows the changes to wrecking ball and the adaptive shield mean he can buy so much time. He uses the shield at the last possible second there. Gets the maximum value, buys time for his teammates. Jaehong builds an amp matrix. What a crazy hold. Absolute insanity. Let's see what happens in the next half when we come back. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Man, what a hold by the Seoul Dynasty. Los Angeles Gladiators gonna be getting ready to try and defend here and see what they can get done. Big Goose here on your screen, of course, gonna be joining the desk on a watch point after the game, so make sure you guys stay tuned once we wrap up this series. But it seems like it could uh, it could take a little while longer, Wolf. Sure. This is definitely- It's a close one, man. Map five potential that we're seeing right now in this series. So Gladiators getting ready to get set up on this defense. So for this, for that last stagger, Fisher was able to do a lot of cool things. Like, so Wrecking Ball was changed so that he can use Adaptive Shield while also still in ball form. So that's a huge buff. Fisher yeah. knows that's the best way he's going to defend. He sticks to the cart, then uses the minefield to prevent half of the Gladiators from touching and contesting. So a lot of really cool plays from Fisher that you know you could go back and watch and you know yourselves and break down. Meanwhile, though, it is going to be the Gladiators trying to run this Bastion defense here. Very tough to execute, like I was talking about before, because you're always exposed. And that's why Fitz is going to once again run the Genji to try to counteract this. Going to be a shift around completely to the opposite side of the high ground here from the Gladiators. Hydration as well. To keep in mind, going to be spamming out these nades on the Junkrat. Does a ton of damage with the recent buffs. This your jumping board takes a lot of hits there from the Bastion, but is going to be safe. Jae Hong, it's losing out on that immortality field. Decay is going to be shredding his way through Jexe. Now Michelle, and one after the other, the Soul Dynasty members going to be taken down. Drop here onto the low ground. We'll be able to get Fisher just before he can make it around the corner. So already. Solid start for Gladiators. Good play by Big Goose. His immortality field meant that Fitz couldn't actually get the dash resets he was looking for. Meanwhile, Jae Hong oh. behind enemy lines. But Fitz is going to have to make it work here, you have to think. Because this comp, you know, it's great when there's, your enemy has a low time bank, but this is a, you know, just a starting push for Dynasty. But if they can't make this happen in two pushes and the Dragon Blade comes out and it doesn't work then, then we're looking at potentially a full hold here. So Jaehong is hiding. He wants to get a really nice immortality field here for Fitz. Jumping up over the top. It's still going to get tagged up by Shaz. Throws it in. We'll hear that configuration tank coming through from Decay. First snipe. Going to be able to find Fisher. Doesn't hit the mark. He doesn't get the immortality field where he wants it to make Fitz not only get the last part of the Dragon Blade, but also use it while being unkillable. And it's just going to be a stagger here on a Michelle Munchkin. 
Translocating out, they know that he's behind the point, closer towards B. And right now, the gliders are showcasing they're very adept at this composition. They're constantly changing position from high to low ground in the middle of the fight, but also from left side here and then also to the center. Fitz has the Dragon Blade now, but he's going to want that Immortality Field. Once again, let's see if Jehong can make it happen this time. He's going to want to launch it right on top of the team, and then he needs to go at that moment. It's on easier said than done. Okay, that's going to be the Amp Matrix coming through, but the K going to be taken down. Fitz managing to find the kill. Riptire running through from Hydration needs this to be huge. Just managed to get the Genji shutting down that blade. Fisher now as well going to be taken down. Rez comes in from Jexay, putting the Genji back into the mix. Roar just sitting on the back of the point here, right in front of where that cart is going to spawn. Desperately trying to stay alive by himself. Pushing in and out of the barrier, trying to buy some time. Mortality field not going to last. The barrier will absorb the blast from Michelle's self-destruct. Not going to be able to find a kill there. Mortality field from Jae Hong now going to be killed off. Munchen going to be taken down. They're actually turning this one around again. Hydration gets the kill onto the Genji, and the game pushes forward. The Gladiators are doing just such a good job of making Decay unkillable. It's just so hard for the Soul Dynasty to get in there and actually get those dash resets for Fitz or look to get the Dragon Blade to get the value he needs it to. Jaehyung's going to switch off of the Batiste because the Immortality Fields he's trying to place at range are just simply being shut down too consistently. Fitz is working towards another Dragon Blade and Jaehyung can theoretically build a Nano Boost during this time, but it's a tall ask. It really is. Void hacked out for the moment, but Ming manages to get back up onto the high ground. One tick going to be gained for free for the Dynasty. The K still sprayed away, nearly takes down Jae Hong. Fitz pushes up to the top, but they just wait. They stop all fire, making sure the deflection is not going to find anything. And now he's dead with that Dragon Blade ready to roll. Has to rejoin in quickly and hope that that blade pops. They also better hope nobody gets staggered here. It's not going to happen. Again, repositioning is Decay. He's always a different spot, but he's slept now. Okay. There's an opportunity. Fitz needs to get in there. He needs to get in there now. Starting to work his way around the corner, but Decay will be able to Blade. wake back up. Blade's going to be coming through, trying to focus in on Aurora. Nearly taken down, but actually the bomb out from Void managed to find Munchkin. Push up over the top, Rip Rip Tiger. Tiger, shutting him down again! The Goose will lose out on the Immortality Field, but doesn't even matter. Second tick getting ready to come through, Nana Boost thrown in onto Decay. He's going to be melting through this bubble. Another sleep. sleep Dart gets the connection, but can they get the kill? No one pushing far enough forward yet. Second tick going to be grabbed. The Soul Dynasty Fisher finally managed to find the kill here onto the Bastion. Taking their way up, nearly have the cap. It's going to be another Amp Field coming through. The immortality Field's going to be gone. Michelle throws a bomb into the back. Mansion of Divine Hydration. Big Goose going to be taken out. They get the cap. It's two and a half minutes for the Soul Dynasty, but remember how far they have to go. Hydration with the huge rip tire there, shutting down Fitz. They were doing such a good job of ignoring the deflections, but it was Jae Hong who comes in twice with two clutch sleep darts, the second one being the massive one. During the time in which Decay is slept, they don't kill him, but rather his teammates. They know the damage is gone. When the Bastion is down like that, and if they try to kill him and they fail, and the Bastion does a massive amount of damage. So don't even give him the opportunity to wake, ignore him, kill everybody else. And by the time that Decay gets up, it's all over. He's all the damage they have, and it's shut down. Jump into the back primal range in from Fisher. He's going to be knocking around. Jay Hong taken out, but fight still going the way of the Dynasty for the moment with Hydration. Completely locked up in a corner. Great juggling coming through from Fisher. And this is looking better and better for the Soul Dynasty by the second here because the Gliders can't run Bastion anymore. I mean, talking about how it's hard to run on A, they ran it very well, but now that we're in the streets phase, they have to match composition. And this is where the Soul Dynasty, uh, you know, squad has been winning consistently in this series and what they've been winning with thus far most of stage one. Now heading into stage two, they're finding that same success. Void up to the top, holding onto the bomb. Decay just going to be trying to get that grab as quickly as possible. Oh, Roar pushed into the front lines. Gets cut down very swiftly by Fitz, who nearly has a grab of his own online. Rally's going to be coming out from both sides. Hydration popping his last. Tries to stay alive. Shaz is going to be using that transcendence, but Fitz grabs nearly there. Not going to have a support ultimate in time to block this one out if they use it on the fight. Jae Hong just going to be spamming away. Transcendent still waiting for him. Void trying to make There's it back the into the mech. Grab comes through. Bob's going to be slammed down. Michelle gets himself a double kill. Roar and Void both eliminated. Now just 2.3 meters away. Dynasty will be able to roll through. Bump up the time bank just a little bit again. There's a win condition here now for the Soul Dynasty. Munchkin's rally that happened right before that last fight 
was what was able to keep everybody alive. Jaeyoung never felt the fear to use his transcendence there. He gets to hold it now for Decay's grab. Shaz couldn't say the same because there wasn't a rally ready for him. He wasn't safe. He needed to trance early. So now Soul Dynasty has the proper tools to take a fight here. Looking in for that charge. War does manage to find Fisher, but he's got the Primal Rage up now to stay alive. Bombs coming in from Void, looking for the pick. Unable to find it. The Shatter coming down. Locks up Fitz next to the cart, but no one's able to find the kill. They chase Ford, looking for Fisher, but the bubble comes down to protect himself as he works his way around the corner. Munchkin up at the front lines, was left all on his lonesome. Will be taken down, and Fisher's not going to make it out alive. A minute and eight seconds remaining. Dynasty, they have a little bit of time. They have a grab getting ready to come up that, with Fitz. And that is exactly what they need. That grab that you just mentioned is quintessential for this to work. And he's going to have to have it. Cannot be eaten. And it has to be a big one. They have to capitalize on it. They need those kills. There's no answer to this right now. The rally is up, so they still have that armor, but that might not be enough. Fitz, high energy. This is their shot. This is their chance. It has to be now. This grab, make or break for Soul. He's got it ready to go. 100 energy. Starting to melt them down, still holding on to the ultimate. Not feeling the moment yet. Chunked down, grab going through it's over on the right up. side of the car, but no, it's only going to be locking up Roar. He gets a bubble, now Fitz is going to be taken down. This could be it for the Gladiators to take the lead. Jexay eliminated as well, now Fitz taking it down by the Fire Strike. And with 20 seconds remaining, Dynasty, they got to do something drastic. They got to get a wrecking ball in here just to tag the cart. Void's positioning made Fitz feel the pressure. He needed to send the grab to the edge, and he was hoping it would okay. still pull them in. It didn't happen. Sees Jexay, locks him up solo. Totally worth for the ultimate. Bombs coming out from Michelle just to try to find a miracle pick. Fisher charging his way through. OT will be forced out, but Decay pushes straight in past the shield. He does not care about it. Fisher gonna be taken out. Roar drops the hammer. The kills come through. Michelle on his lonesome trying to keep this card contested. Jexay joins in, but it's just not gonna be enough. And the Gladiators set the take the lead here in the series 2-1 as they close out King's Row. Very well played by the Gladiators. Again, the very well-prepared Bastion strategy. Then swapping over to the streets phase, winning out in ult trades. Good clutch team fights as well. Nice positioning there from Boyd, preventing Fitz from getting the grab he needed in the end. And they take the lead. New Age strats punishing Soul Dynasty. Let's see if they can tie us up and force a game five when we come back. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Man, what a King's Row round that was. Dynasty with the wonderful defense on that Gladiator's attack. But it's just, things got crazy. I mean, they are just really clearly struggling to deal with Bastion, right? And, you know, you said it right before we jumped to the break. It's kind of like new meta versus the old right now in terms of defense. And Soul has not yet been able to conquer these setups and it, it happened with sure it happened with decay and this is i think one of the big signs that it's not just about how great sure is or how great decay is but it's just that soul dynasty hasn't yet prepared 
the proper response. And that's what, you know, is may cost them this series in the end. The sleep dart was good from Jayhawk, but I mean, that's what barely saved them on eight. We might have not even seen the streets phase had that not happened. I mean, to be fair, a lot of people predicting that the Gladiators coming into the stage would good, were going to be one of the most well-prepared teams because they were having that surge in the second half of Stage 1 because they've had so much time yeah. after missing out on the playoffs to get prepared for this meta. Dynasty, not nearly as much prep time. That's definitely but true. It's definitely showing that they need to sit down and figure some things out when it comes down to these yeah. bunker compositions. While, while Soul was prepping Michelle to to hack Jonak in the playoffs. Gladiators were learning Batiste, they were learning Bastion, and they were playing to what would become the new meta. As we head into Gibraltar to start things off, it is going to be, for the most part, mirrored compositions with Munchkin actually on the Ana rather than the Brigida. We've seen him do this quite a few times now. It's so knowing there's no necessary stun required. It's just gonna be about heal denies here and nano boosts that have constantly been tossed into Fisher. Trying to play around him. Roar up here onto the high ground. Zapping away where he can, but Munchkin gets a nice snipe on the big goose, taking him out. Yeah, just overextended there a little bit. He will be able to join in very quickly. They're going to have to contest this if they want to get any value out of that big goose pick, because he's going to be right back. Yeah, that's about as far as they want to go without the Lucio. Now it's going to be trying to work Dynasty off of the high ground. Yep. So Fisher is looking to, again, be aggressive. Build up energy for Fitz, and then get nanoed from Munchkin once that's ready. And that basically makes him unkillable because he's going to have his primal right after that. That's the idea here with this setup on the Winston. Both of them pretty darn close to those primal rages. Dynasty going to be pushed back over towards A. Cart being brought up out of the underpass. More accessible spot for the Gladiators. Nano gonna be thrown down by Munchkin, but Jexay already taken out. Great start for Hydration, finding that pick. Fisher is playing back around the cart, hops over to the side, looking for Shaz. Does not have a Transcendence anymore, will be taken down. Hydration hiding inside of the bubble. Will get focused out, gets a stun in on a Michelle's mech, but Fisher is there, scoops up the kill. Now just gonna be smacking everybody around with the Primal Rage and the Gladiators, likely gonna have to reset. Be like Fisher. Fisher is an example. Uh, he sets an example for everyone. <laughs> I mean, he played that nano boost very passively because he realized in that moment, I can't go deep because I'm going to die. Yeah. And he waits. He sees Shaz and he takes actually the free kill rather than trying to get the big damage done, trying to be the carry. Then he primals later, getting more value out of that as well. Very good Winston player. One of the best. Up over the top to K. Now gets the Graviton Surge online. Trying to build up some energy. That's going to be a very valuable bubble right there that he finds. Just breaking the Winston shield. Tracking Michelle, making sure that he's not going to get this blocked out by the D-Matrix. Now, that's going to be gone. It suddenly throws that one down, but Jexy's ready for it. Has the sound barrier ready to roll. The grab's not going to lead to any kills. However, Cart will roll through into A in the meantime. Yeah, Gladiators is going to be moving into the hangar, trying to keep Soul behind them. Bomb thrown in deep by Void. Not going to find a pick. The K going lower and lower. Gets a bubble up for a little bit longer. Is trying to survive. It seems like he might just be able to do so. They're jumping on top of him. Another nano going to be thrown in onto Fisher. He's got the, that Primal Rage ready to roll, but he's trying to save it for a dire moment. The K gets Munchkin, but Fitz finds the K. Michelle going to get popped out. Jay Hong punished, but it seems like Gladiator's still grinding against Soul Dynasty. Will be able to keep the cart rolling. It just feels like Soul is just not. They're they're falling apart. They're not on the same page, and they're literally getting circles run around them by the Gladiators. Or that's not how you say that sense, but the Gladiators are running circles around them, right? And they're just really struggling to find their footing in these chaotic fights. And all resources are being put on Fisher. When that goes poorly, Decay is able to find solo kills. He's killing whoever he wants, he's maintaining higher energy, and Fitz isn't getting the resources he needs to compete with that, because everything is going into Fisher. As you can see, the bubble, the primal, it's all just their entire game plan is around this player. Yep, straight into the back, Fitz though. Picking up a bit of the slack, manages to get rid of Shaz, now Hydration. Gonna be eliminated, so two of the supports, just Big Goose by himself, it's not enough to keep the rest of the team alive, so they'll try to exit Void. Working his way upstairs, would love to not get staggered, and seems like he will be safe from that. When it works, you know, it looks great. When Fisher's got the bubble on him, Fitz is getting that extra energy. You're seeing the primal come out and the kills come through. When it doesn't work is when the gliders are having a great time and 
uh, you know, it's it's very hit or miss here what we're seeing from Fisher, but you can see the clear plan is to commit everything to this Winston. He's got the Discord auto orb on him now. Oh, well, Primal Rage is out from Roar. Hydration got the rally rolling as they try to work their way back over to the cart. Jay Hong is going to be using that transcendence, but now the grab's going to be coming through. Okay, matching as they lock them up. Members of the Soul Dynasty, no legs to stand on, no support ultimates to speak of. Their legs swept out from underneath of them as Big Goose gets a nice right click. Double kill coming through and the cart will advance over into B. Yeah, once you don't have the primal as Fisher and you're playing like this, you know, you're hoping, you can see it was at like 98%. You're hoping you're going to get it. You're going to play like you have it. Oh, Jay Hong, yep, ran down. But when you don't get it, you die. Now he's got the primal, but he doesn't have it for the contest. And perhaps playing a little bit more conservatively hey. might have been the play. And that's what we saw them do when we started this series out. And now it just feels like they've, like I said, they're falling apart and they've lost their focus. Wars up here on the high ground. Gonna drop down, gonna engage. Pushing forward aggressively here are the Gladiators. Decay trying to get that next ult online. Being a kill on the fit's gonna be a good way to build it up, but Munchkin taking him down, not so much. Not gonna work to their advantage. Primal range out from both of the Winstons. As they just try to look for some further kills, the cart's still advancing, getting closer for the Gladiators as they try to buy some extra space. About to round the final corner. Yep. But Hydration, push them back. Hydration's about to have a rally, so there's almost no way that Shaz will be forced to use Trance. So they have the answer to Fitz's grab, too. That's about to come online. Yep, Decay's as well. Jay Hong will have his ready to go. Big Goose further behind, not yet having that sound barrier, whereas Jexing is ready to go. They use the rally, but they can't keep pushing forward. Grab's gonna be coming out. Jay Hong instantly pushing forward, stacking the ultimates on top of each other. Could this cause him in the long run? We're gonna find out, but it looks like maybe not, because Michelle comes up with a double kill. Jay Hong is able to snipe the enemy Lucio. With the initiation that the Gladiators took, the Soul Dynasty were able to react quickly. Counter Grab comes in from Fitz later, and that's the moment where the Gladiators are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, because they're losing a fight with Jae Hong coming in with his transcendence, and they can't escape either because Michelle has the uh, explosive on the other side, the self-destruct, excuse me, on the other side. And, you know, it's a losing fight. A lot of time bought here for the Soul Dynasty in that moment by Michelle. Not able to fully commit up there onto the high ground. Roar just dropping back down, trying to poke out where he can to get that primal. Now has it online, it's gonna instantly use it. Try. Just knock around the members of the dynasty. Fitz gonna be rammed down by Boyd. Gladiators make their way back over onto the cart. Michelle gonna be cut off from the rest of the squad and Munchkin gonna be taken down as is Jexay. Jay Hong just sitting back with the transcendence ready to roll. Big Goose just looking for potentially locking one member up. Fisher's got the primal. He's using these to engage rather than to survive most of the time. Moving them back, Jay Hong pops the transcendence, moves his way over onto the cart. Sound barrier is out from Big Goose. Shaz now, Transcendence online. Fitz gonna be melted down. Boyd buys a kill. Munchkin dead right as the rally comes in. They will be able to push it through. Jexay is knocked off as well. Pretty crazy fight there in the end. I think the Gladiators have just kind of figured out there's two ways to beat Soul. One's to play around this aggressive Winston, and the other is to use Bastion compositions, right? And they've done both extremely well, and Soul's struggling to, I think, play a little bit more passively now on a map where they're playing the 3-3 mirror. Sure, it's Winston v. Winston rather than the Ryan v. Ryan. And Fisher is right now a thousand damage ahead of Roar, but that's because he's playing more aggressively, he's playing more forward, he's getting the resources that Fitz isn't. And, you know, Decay, as a result, is getting a lot of solo kills. So, you know, this is not an over map by any means, but it's a decent time bank. It's 30 seconds plus for the Gladiators. And you could just feel that Soul Dynasty is not playing as comfortable as they were before. Yeah, 37 seconds on the finish for the Gladiators. Dynasty will have to see what they can manage here with their attack. And whether or not they can best it, let alone finish the map this time. Time will tell. So far, still just going to be showing that 3-3 at the start. Gladiators doing the same on the defense. Roar still holding on to the Winston. It's just, it's just interesting from the Dynasty. Like we said, not that much time realistically to prep. Do you have to kind of question, you know, where has Fleta been this entire time when they're trying to run the matching strategies I mean, in the previous maps? It is a good question, you know, and perhaps Fitz is playing better when all the resources are going to Fisher. Fleta's used to getting those resources. We are going to see Starting Michelle Symmetra here, this is a little bit crazy. 
Let's see if this works out. You can burn through a lot with this if you can get into position, but just gonna put Fitz onto the high ground here and that's about it. Yeah, lob some shots. Taking a little bit of damage here from the flank, but overall will be okay. Cart just slowly inching forward. Gladiators are playing this one out very patiently, not going, not getting overzealous at all. Fitz, by the way, is exactly 2,000 damage ahead of his counterpart in Decay. He's just not able to get the kills. Decay is getting solo oftentimes because of the overextensions. Well, Munchen going to be taking a slide down the rocks as two of the supports from the Dynasty getting punished. The rest of the squad going to have to peel back over to the spawn. And they're trying to deny Fisher any type of exit, and he will not find one. So there's something a little bit weird about how Soul is playing some of these pushes. You know, the Symmetra to get the high ground, sure. You, you know, I could see that. I can understand that. But then, you know, these attacks where they're leaving themselves vulnerable to getting cut in half by gliders. This is uncharacteristic of Soul. And, you know, perhaps it's that Fitz, you know, is in instead of Fleta. Perhaps there's some communication issues. But look at this again. Fisher goes in. The bubble's on him before he even really is under fire. Roar, though, isolates himself and just going to get punished. So major opening in favor of the Soul Dynasty can finally start moving that cart through the underpass. They need to capitalize on this now. Fitz is ahead and grab too. Shell pushing his way forward onto the high ground, gets that Discord Orb, will peel back. This could be an opportunity to get this grab fight here and take A with a massive time bank. Fitz is 10% away. Shaz has the trance, but they can try to bait this out with this Primal. Yep, Primal Look now coming him. in. Transcendence will be used by Shaz, stacking the ultimates here. Are the Gladiators sound very used by Big and Goose? And grabs up. Grab is up. Will be thrown down. Decay will be the first one to fall. Multiple kills now coming in. Roar trading one back on the Jayhawk. Gets two on defense. But it's not going to be enough to maintain control of this card. The rest of the squad is going to be taken down. That's going to be Egg. Getting ready to come through for the Soul Dynasty. Boy. Interesting choice there. They were hoping for a recontest. It's not going to happen. Yeah, that's... But Look, I mean, I actually have to really say, like, there's nothing Shaz could have done in this moment. This is the first time Soul gets an advantage, and it's like a snap of the fingers. They go in, use the, you know, Primal on the Fisher. He goes in, forces the trance, then they have to grab right afterwards. You know, what a moment. And I think Big Goose was probably trying to save Shaz's trance, but there was a miscommunication moment. They both use the support ults at the same time. There's clearly a couple disconnects right there with Void also using the self-destruct. Yeah. So. And, and you know, that's the moment where Big Goose is like, oh, yeah, wait, don't use your trance. I got you, man. But they both use their ultimates, and then suddenly Fitz is like, well, this is the best grab ever. <laughs> Nicely done by Soul. Well, speaking of grabs, straight in on top of Michelle, right on the dome. Transcendence is that from Jay Hong, however, to keep everybody alive. Still just playing in and around the cart. Fisher's got another Primal Rage ready to roll. Sound barrier out from Jexay. Roar going low with his Primal. Will get stunned up by Munchkin and they take him out. The cart will continue to breeze through the hangar. Yeah, this is actually a great push for the Dynasty right now. And they still hold that ult lead. For the Gladiators here, you know, they hold a Transcendence now finally, but it's not where it needs to be. You know, this is not... By the time he uses it, if he's using it for Fitz's grab, he could have built another one, right? That's the weird disconnect where they have this advantage that isn't useful against what Soul Dynasty has. Fisher's Fisher going to drop down. Yep, might just have to use it again if Fisher gets a Primal Rage in a corner on a Chaz. Yep. Which is what he's looking for. Let's get stunned up. Take a considerable amount of damage here. They try to melt him down. Transcendence will be used. Fitz going to have to grab at 16%. In the corner on the Hydration. They take him out. The K falling just before that. And Dynasty continue to look pretty darn good here on this push. Fisher barely managing to stay alive, jumps back over. Now Jay Hong gonna have that Transcendence ready to go. Grab comes out, they lock up the supports, they eliminate him, Roar on his lonesome will be taken down. And the Dynasty will go ahead, and bump themselves up 340 on the clock. We're seeing Hydration hit these stuns onto Fisher, but once the stun wears off, Fisher is just, I mean, he's still gonna get in there, he's still gonna get on top of Shaz. Shaz is struggling to stay alive in these moments. You know, he had such a great series yesterday but against this completely different play style versus fisher you know sometimes you have to trance because if you die the result is the same grab's still gonna hit your team and there's no trance i'll jump into the back they do manage to find fitz like maybe they were gonna be able to keep him alive with the help of the zarya bubble and some extra healing but was not enough so good focus fire from the gladiators but primal rage gonna be gone the step one towards catching up in the ult economy for the gladiators is getting that pick roar is gonna swap over to reinhardt interesting choice here to make it a little bit tougher for Fisher to primal his way in. 
because he could be just charged and stunned. Or he could just get popped. <laughs> Rockets from Void, looking pretty good. <laughs> That's one way. Let's go ahead and snatch him up. And we'll pop Michelle out of that mech and likely just leave him to his own devices. See if they kill him off, they will. Okay, Roar, he wants to charge. Yep. Well, Decay is going to have the Graviton. And this is one, uh, you know, thing that Soul has to be worried about, but there are others. In terms of how they're playing, you know, they're hoping Fisher's going to jump in here and get an another Primal and bait out the, tra the you know, Shaz Transcendence. But we're a ways away from Fitz's Graviton because he was picked, so everything's kind of messed up in terms of Ult Economy because of that one single kill. A lot of ultimates on the way for Soul Dynasty. Big Six nearly snagged here. Fisher jumping into the back, gets a Primal Range, pops that one immediately, gets stunned up for the moment, now jumps his way over into the grab. Bombs coming up, looking for the picks. Sound Barrier helping keep him alive, as well as the shields up. Shatter looking for the hit there. Sounds like Roar not going to be able to get too much from that one. And hydration gets focused down by Fitz, who's still holding onto the grab. Finally goes ahead, throws this one down, catching two here onto the car, and they instantly get dropped. Void going to get knocked out of the mech, and Decay can't make it back over to the spawn room. So with a minute and 40 remaining, Soul Dynasty rounding the final corner on that final stretch here. Very, very close to getting a better time bank here. There's no real ultimates to delay. They may actually just be stuck in the spawn. They do get out. Nice charge. Yep. Their way here. On to the point, but Decay absolutely focused down. Fits with a higher energy. Just melts through him. Hot knife through butter, as they say. Roar is well focused, and there's just no one that's able to stand a chance. A bomb comes down in celebration. And we will be moving into overtime on Gibraltar. Very well played by Soul and Fisher, getting a slightly better timing. Fisher is changing what it means to Primal, usually uses a survival tactic, not in this case. He's going in, he's forcing Transcendences, he's empowering Fitz. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see if it's going to be tied up when we come back for OT. Ladies and gentlemen, a minute on the clock for the Gladiators, a minute and 34 seconds for the Dynasty. So very tight hit. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this deny on the Shatter. Roar trying to drop the hammer, but the Shield Bash comes through. Clutch plays here for Munchkin. That's all happening while Fisher is forcing another trance to be used from Shaz. Now, this is a very small time bank for the LA Gladiators on the attack. But they pushed the cart very efficiently last time because even though Soul was getting kills, they weren't actually stopping the cart from rolling. They're going to have to change that here, or the 34 seconds advantage won't mean much for the Dynasty. Once again, Fisher's just looking for that primal early. They're playing low around the corner. Munchkin taking a bit of damage. It's back over onto the Ana. Big bio from Munchkin. Yep, good hits coming through. Stops Gladiators from advancing as a unit, but they still did have Roar bringing the cart up through the underpass. So half the time, it's going to be exhausted. A little bit over halfway towards point A. Bionade going to be thrown in, not finding any, any connections onto the members of the Gladiators. So still going to be healthy, still going to be safe to yeah. play forward. All right. Heart slowed down now. Yeah, this is really rough for the Gladiators. You know, they, there's no real way to kill someone. They're going to look for Munchkin. Yeah, jump up over the top. Roar takes a ton of damage. Bio hits all leave. six, all oh, six hits. man, everybody's got to play back. Three seconds remaining. Void does manage to push forward to force out the OT. Just trying to wait for everybody to get topped up. Now they will rejoin in as a squad. Roar pushed back away from the high ground, trying to sit into the bubble to stay safe. Transcendence comes out from Chess. He goes back up over the top, just poking out where he can. Fisher's got the primal online. Roar is still 35% away, and Roar, Void nearly gets melted out of the mech, and now it's going to happen. Grav gonna be coming through immediately, locks up the rest of the tanks. They'll get punished. Sound Barry a bit too late from Big Goose to keep Roar in the fight. Answering Grav comes in, Jay Hulk's ready with the Transcendence. Big Goose trying to keep the card contested, gets a Zarya bubble to stay alive for a little bit longer, but there's so much damage coming up from Fitz. They will be able to find the hold here. No A for Gladiators, a chance of tying us up and forcing a map five, very realistic for the Dynasty. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just again and again and again, 
we're seeing fits in these grabs when Shaz doesn't have transcendence because they're forcing these so early on. That six hit bio grenade from Munchkin as well bought a lot of time and gave a huge positional advantage to the dynasty because if the gladiators try to engage with no healing, they will absolutely lose that fight. But because they stay inside, like you were saying, staying back, so they don't lose those members. That's when Soul Dynasty gets a massive positional advantage. You get Fisher with the Primal again. And they have really just hit this ride after a rocky start on Gibraltar here around Fisher, And these, you know, very fast grabs that come out when there's no trance because it's been forced earlier. You know, it, it might seem simple, you know, at home, if you're watching this, you might be thinking, well, why doesn't Shaz just not use it then, you know, die and then come back with it? If he dies, then Fitz grabs in that moment, because if you're dead, you can't trance either. So it's kind of a catch-22 situation. They're hoping to turn these fights around, you know, in this moment with the Transcendence, but it's not happening. This Fisher is nigh unkillable because he's got the Primal, and then he's got the uh, Nano Boost. So <laughs> it's tough. Oh, now this that, could be it. Yeah, now they're going to have to have an incredible hold. And remember, Fisher has never lost to his former teams. Never have. Gladiators happened. can pull off this hold. They will be the first ones to shut him down with this iteration of the squad. Dynasty. Steady as she goes. Munchkin still playing with the Ana. Jump up to the top. Fisher, boop back. It'll be safe as we start moving into the underpass. They're going to have to come down here and contest because this cart only has to roll just the top of the underpass here for the side of the half pipe esque spot down here that's called the car wash oftentimes. Michelle just solo pushing this as Fisher's looking for opportunities. Yep, doesn't have to go too far, Void. Just keeping the cart contested. Now going to be joining back uh -oh. up and Big News taken down. He'll deny on the hydration as well, but seems like he'll be able to survive for a little bit longer. The K drops down, trying desperately to build up for a grab, but just doesn't have any energy. He's trying to get it. Only 16 gained, both bubbles used. Chaz now Roar gonna be taken down, Soul Dynasty. They want that map five, they want the victory in the end. It the looks Revenant, like they're gonna get it. He's coming back. He's coming back, Decay's pushed off. There's no way to stop this, absolutely none. If it's is about to have a grab, not that he needs it. I mean, Roar swapped over onto a Reinhardt, but he's not even gonna be able to tag in. Hydration and Decay both taken down, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. No better way to close out the night than with a game five between these two squads. It has been tight knit throughout, trading back and forth on the wins. Dynasty, they get Gibraltar. Let's see who takes the series when we come back.
And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Map five to see if the Revenant rings true, if Fisher can continue his dominance against his former teams, or if this iteration of the Gladiators can be the first one to take him down. Very much close here. You could see it happened twice before versus London in stage three, week four, and then the fourth week of stage four, where it was pushed to the fifth map. This will be the third time that happened. So he's got a two and zero track record of winning final games versus his old teams as we head to Lijong Tower for our tiebreaker map here. It's a map that is usually dominated by 3-3, but we have seen a few variations of different compositions as of late with Roadhog. We've seen Soldier 76. So there are ways that we could break away from that. And I fear for the Gladiators that once again, we'll just see Fisher terrorize Shaz with all the support he's given. And Fitz is just, meanwhile, his whole job is to build a Graviton. Once there's no trance, that's all he has to do. And that's been the whole idea. And it's, you know, we have this storyline of Fisher defeating his old teams, but in this matchup, it is really all about him because that is exactly how Soul Dynasty is playing this. All right, well, Dynasty going to be using Fitz on the Sombra. Decay still sticking through. Just a uh, scout. Yeah, swap. Okay, will be just a scout, as you said. So here we go. Shots coming across the bridge. Could be a, a back approach for the Dynasty. And this is their way around. Going to be, you know, gliders with the positional advantage here because they didn't have to swap like that. Yeah, Jax taking a lot of damage actually on that approach. Knocked down below half HP. Shash just going to be spamming away. Oh, we're going to get dropped in. Has the Discord Orb in on the Jax as he rides up along the walls. But Boyd is going to be losing out of the mech first and foremost here at the start of this round. Jump into the back. Fisher going to be zapping away. I guess that Zarya Bud will stay alive for a little bit longer, and Decay is going to be taken down now. Big Goose, a great start to the Soul Dynasty. Remember how things looked on Oasis? Yeah. This is not how you want to start a fight, is to lose your Zarya. Decay was playing aggressively before. Look at his ult charge versus Fitz. You can see the play style difference here. Decay is aggressive. Fitz usually plays more passively. And when you see this, you know, grab that's ready for Decay, it's exciting if he is able to get the point. Then he can defend with it. But on the attack here, when Jaehyung already has Trance, it doesn't even feel like that great of a resource. It's hard to make a play with this. Well, so far, just going to be 30% built up. Grab now online. Roar taking so much damage, tries to jump out of there. Graviton Search will be coming through, but Fisher with the Primal Range manages to find Big Goose already. Two members gone on the back of that grab from Decay. Things just catastrophic at the moment for the Gladiators. Now, Fisher commits the Primal, though. So, you know, he's not going to be able to terrorize Shaz with that, and there is no nano boost with Jaehong on this Zenyatta. So you have to imagine this time Shaz will get his chance to at least nullify the Graviton Surge, and maybe they can flip the point with the double support ults they have. Jaehong doesn't have his. So in the longer fight, there's more healing, there's more survivability for the Gladiators. Fisher getting nearly melted down there, does manage to stay alive. Primary is going to be out for Roar, but the grab comes in from Fitz, just locking him up. High energy on the Zarya, trying to focus fire him, but unable to find the kill. Michelle buys a little bit of space with a bomb, but Jax is going to be taken down before he can use the sound barrier, likely not in a good enough position. Might have just been a solo ult had he committed it there, so we'll just be saving it for the reapproach. Gladiators get a flip, 79% to Soul. I think the idea behind Fitz using the grab there in that particular moment was to lock down Roar, so it wasn't going to get much out of the Primal Rage, but it didn't work. It backfired, and now the Gladiators have the support ult advantage still, and there's a lot of ways to, you know, delay here for them right now while they know the grab is offline. Hydration just waiting to, for the stun on Fisher because he has been leading the charge every time. Very fast reapproach here for Dynasty, not wasting any time. Jump into the back, Roar, going to build up. Fisher about to have that Primal online. It's going to be the Sound Barrier and the Transcendence used by Dynasty simultaneously. Grab comes in. That's going to be the Gladiators winning the fight. Four members gone. This is the fight you expect the Gladiators to take, though, with the edge they had in the grabs. And Fisher has Primal, right? This is what, you know, we were talking about just moments ago is Fisher didn't have the Primal to force out the Trance from Shaz, so that wasn't going to be uh, an issue. But now that he's got it, and Fitz is going to be able to build a grab in this fight. Can he force the Transcendence? That's what he's been doing all series long. Yeah, jump onto the back there. Just trying to find a pick on the Jaehong. Unable to find him, but Jexay taking down Chaz. Sniping out Cutting again. Cutting hydration. Fisher with that Primal trying to get a knockoff, but actually just sends him to safety. Hydration sails across back over to the point. 
Hydration with the Shield Bash to get across. Well played, but Void's team act. They do manage to find one pick, but is that going to be enough to transition into a cap? Shaz still has the Transcendence. Goes ahead, throws this one in. Transcendence comes out from Shaz, as you say. Munchkin playing very far forward, trying to find a pick. Trying to set up. Out of the back of that, but Chexy gets picked again. Taken down. Now Fisher going to be gone. Jayhawk about to have a Transcendence online, but he might have to use it just to delay and force OT, but he's not going to get the chance. This is looking really good for the Gladiators. There's just no way to really get on this point. Fisher's going to try it again with the Wrecking Ball, but he's so far away. Shell popped out, uses the self-destruct, but can't make it back into the back. They finish off the Baby Diva Decay, scooping up the kill. He's nearly got another grab online. Fisher trying to stay alive as he rolls around the top of the point, but will get taken down. Grab about to be up, Jack say dead. Jaehong pushing forward with the Transcendence up. Grab comes in, it's gonna lock him up right outside. Can anyone get there? The answer's just gonna be no. Gladiators, they take the first round of the Jean Tower. Home crowd here is loving it as well. And I gotta say, we're seeing a lot better control of Fisher by hydration. He's lurking around corners, he's expecting Fisher to come in, he's baiting him in. You know, he had that uh, shield bash across the edge to survive during Primal. Uh, he's just really uh, limiting what Fisher can do in a lot of these ways. Not to mention that Shaz is also playing a little bit further back. He's not putting himself in these vulnerable situations. There's adaptation here on the side of the LA Gladiators. They are certainly starting to deal with this style a lot better. And now we're looking at Control Tower where it's Ryan versus Ryan. So that isn't even a factor here. This is how I think the Gladiators close this series out, is to win this one, win it 2-0. Don't even go to that final map. This could be it. You hear the home crowd here chanting for the Gladiators. Dynasty, though, could use some support. Fisher as well could certainly use some, but he's not going to get it in time. Taken down as is Fitz. And that will be Gladiators netting themselves the initial cap. And this is so huge on Li Zhang. When you have this first cap, you have the control of the point, but more importantly, the control of the choke, where Soul Dynasty has to approach. They can only take two paths, and that's assuming they get through the smaller choke. And it's very easy for the Gladiators to do massive damage before they can really start to touch the point. As you can see here, look at all the damage coming through from Decay on the right clicks. Soul Dynasty can't really punish. They can't really outplay it. Fisher's gonna have to use his shield to touch the point. And here comes the attack. Speed boost up. Pushing their way forward, stunning on the hydration. Will get cut down, Fisher. Pull the swing and find the kill. Shatter about to be online for him. Rally's out for Munchkin as soon as he gets it ready to go. Jay Hong to get a lot of damage, but doesn't pop the transcendence in desperation. Shows some restraint, knows his limits, and holds on to it. Shaz spamming out where he can, but Fitz comes up with a double. Void's going to be taken down. The flip comes in. Only 38% gain for the Gladiators so far. Very risky attack from the Dynasty, the way they use that speed boost there, but they were just not willing to give Decay a grab and positional advantage on this map. They knew they had to take a risk. They knew they needed to win that fight. They did. And now this is a very even map right now. When we see the attack come through here, the Gladiators have a lot of ults, but using them against the support ultimates of Dynasty is the tough part. Look at how far back Soul Dynasty is playing. They do not want to get caught in a grab. They start inching their way forward. It's going to be the grab coming through. Transcendence is out from Shaz. Looking for the pin. Fisher yeah, sure. does isolate Roar. They manage to take him down. Now I'm not going to have that Earth Shadow. The rest of the Gladiators trying to peel back. Seems like no one else is going to be taken down. No staggers to be found. This tank matchup is so close right now yeah, between these two. You know, Roar's the new member of the Gladiators. He wasn't a former team of the Fishers, but they both did play for Kongdu Panthera. They're both the main tank for that squad in different eras. Fisher's still holding the Shatter. He wants to wait for a mistake from Roar. Well, bomb to open things, Void. Throwing it into the back, not able to find any picks. Sound barrier used from the side of the Dynasty. Matched by Big Goose. Grab coming through. Jaehaan has a transcendence, but it's not enough to keep Fisher alive. Now Munchen gonna be taken down. Gladiators, this could be their chance to get the flip. Just have to finish off a shell. And Jexay seems really easy now. The front line has been broken. Critically, Shaz is going to have a transcendence because if yes. he didn't, Soul would be poised to take this round and force a third round because there would just be no way to deal with the, the incoming transcendence. Fisher, he's been doing such a good job of preventing Shaz from getting these trances on Winston, but on Reinhardt, you're just not able to do that. You're not able to close the distance. You're not able to do that damage unless you can get a flanking shatter. Too, too predictable. He's up at the front, though. He's trying to make something happen. Oh, Decay taking a ton of damage there in the front. 
Fisher as well going so very low. Now Roar trying to stay alive. Shaz doesn't want to have to use a transcendence. Big Goose! Who's got a damage, but no Big Goose gonna be taken down. Now the shadow comes in. Hydration gonna get picked off. Dynasty looking for the flip back, and they are gonna have it. 72 to 72 at the moment. The flip gonna be coming through. Gladiators still do have a chance to fight this one out, but it's really gonna be on the back. Now Just they have few alts. They have a choice. Do they take the fight to the gladiators in the choke point, or do they try to fight on the point? The healing ultimates that they'll have in the longer fight. They're playing forward. They're playing forward. They want to use this grab. They want to stop them from really touching the point. Get an opening pick. They okay. back off, though. Was just poking out. Ult's getting ready to come in for the Gladiators, but they need to nail him. Transcend is up on either side. Both. That's going to be the eighth Boys, point. Boys. He takes it away. Could that just be it? They push around the side. Michelle throws in the bomb. He's looking for some picks, but he's not going to be able to find anything. 99% right now for the Soul Dynasty. Gladiators desperately need to get this flip. Fisher taking Jay so Hong. much damage on he the plate. He's done. Pushing Jay straight Hong's into done. his front. Jay Hong still holding on to the Transcendence. Now going to be popping in the bomb. going to be coming through on the back of the Graviton Surge. Can he get the picks? Fuck it. The triple kill. He might just do it. Flip coming in. Dynasty still have an opportunity to fight this one out. 20% left. They don't have the Gladiators. tools. Can they do this? They don't have the tools they need. The stagger on Michelle means they'll have even less time. Void with two major plays. The worst thing they could have dealt with was a grab. He is able to absorb that and in a potentially lost fight, gets the angle on that bomb. So Dynasty, Fisher, he's gonna have to do it. He's gonna have to be the Revenant. If he wants to keep that record alive, he's got the Shatter. We also have the sound barrier. Jack say just gonna be opening up with that one. The Shatter coming down. Shatter's not, not gonna it. find anything. Fisher not able to get it on the pin. Not gonna find the connection. Fisher going lower and lower. He's gonna get finished off. Michelle Smith popped out of the back. The crowd comes in from Decay. The Gladiators, the OT ticket away. Shatter just for fun. Jack say will get finished off. That's the team wipe. That's the victory. The Gladiators, they finally shut him down. Fisher cannot get the victory against this squad. Long time teammate, Void.